This is Twit. So, Leo, I think there'll be some intersection between us uh, on, on this on this next topic, a little bit of miscellany. I discovered Scientific American magazine. Yes, I know where you go. In my <laughs> in in my high school years. Me too. Yep. It was incredibly influential for me uh, since its science writing was pitched at just the right level. Um, toward the back of every issue was a monthly column called Mathematical Games written by, and I imagine this guy's name is familiar to us all, Martin Gardner. Um, and he was quite influential. Wikipedia noted that Gardner's Mathematical Games column became the most popular feature of the magazine and was the first thing, it certainly was for me, that many readers turned to. In September of 1977, Scientific American acknowledged the prestige and popularity of Gardner's column by moving it from the back of the magazine to the very front. Mm -hmm. the, it's the, the main reason ran, I subscribed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The column ran, get this, from 1956. Mm. Now, that was a year after I was born and probably one or two years before the year you I were was born. born. It was the year I was born. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, from 56 through 1981 with sporadic columns afterwards. And it was the first introduction of many subjects that Gardner talked about to a wider audience. Mm -hmm. And the point of this bit of history is that it was Martin Gardner's October 1970 column published early in my sophomore year of high school where Gardner introduced his readers to John Horton Conway's mm -hmm. amazing Game of Life. Mm -hmm. We've spoken of Conway's Game of Life many times through the years on this podcast. Conway's creation was incredibly elegant in the simplicity of of its rules and the complexity of its results. Uh, and it rather clearly divided all people who were exposed to it into two camps. Those who thought it was the coolest thing they had ever seen. And those who thought that the first group <laughs> might benefit from medication. <laughs> I never got over the game of life. Never. It's the no. greatest thing ever. The, the world hasn't. No. Uh, needless to say, you and I were members of the first camp. Yep. Uh, and the game has the game at the time consumed me for a long time. Yep. Uh, Wikipedia has a terrific page about Conway's game of life. Anyone who's listening to this podcast who doesn't already know what we're talking about must go to the Wikipedia page. If you don't know what a glider Conway's, is, go now. <laughs> and uh, well, and that glider, that glider gun up yeah. there in the upper right, yeah. which is emitting gliders. Yeah. Uh, there are some beautiful animated uh, gifs or gifs, depending upon uh, how you pronounce it. Uh, the page is beautiful. All of our desktop PCs and smartphones have implementations of Conway's Game of Life. Oh yeah. Um, and. While you're stuck at home waiting for this pandemic to subside, you will not be bored. Sadly, I bring all this up because last Saturday, April 11th, COVID-19 claimed the life of John Horton Conway. Um, Wikipedia writes, John Horton Conway was an English mathematician active in the theory of finite groups, not theory, that, that's actually a thing, not theory, number theory, combinatorial oh, game yeah, not theory. Not theory is all about topology. That's exciting yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's very cool yeah, stuff. And yeah. coding theory. He also made contributions to many branches of recreational mathematics, most notably the invention of the cellular automaton called the game of life. Conway spent the first half of his long career at the University of Cambridge in England. And unfortunately, as it turns out, the second half at Princeton University in New Jersey. And of course, we know that New Jersey is one of the spots that's had a big flare up of, of COVID, yeah. um, where he held the title John von Neumann Professor Emeritus on 11th of April 2020 at age 82. 
He's died of COVID-19 at his home in New Jersey. So sad. So I just wanted to mention that to our listeners. Um, you know, uh, very influential. Um, so much. Uh, the, I mean, the game of life, it, it, it's, it's so simple, yet what it does, what it produces is fantastic. And <clears throat> I mean, and, and there's been so much work done, like in like it, it's it's a perfect place for a person to like practice their coding skills. What is the fastest life generator I can produce? And there has been, I mean, there've been papers written about <laughs> optimizing the speed at which you iterate over a group of cells, which are still alive, how to not bother spending time in dead areas and, and predict, I mean, just really cool things. There are, there are, there are things that move across the grid. And of course, you know, C is, is in the game of life is this, is the speed of light, which in the physical universe is the, is the fastest that anything can travel. So of course you have C equals one grid per one grid, one cell grid per iteration is C in the game of life. And so you have different things that move at different percentages of C. Uh, I mean, there's just, a, there's a whole vocabulary, there's there's loafs and blinkers and gliders and this is and all based spaceships on three rules. That's it. It's yes. just three rules for how these things generate. That's, yes, it's so cool. It's so cool. <laughs> I just love it.